New Year. I want to welcome all of you for this home service in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are excited to worship with you in this service. Hallelujah. Come, let us read uh, together Psalm 95, the responsive reading taken from Psalm 95, verses 1 to 6. Let us read. Verse 1 Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Verse 3 For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. Verse 5 the sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Let us read verse 6 together. Come, Amen. let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before, before the Lord, Lord our, our Maker. Maker. Come, let us pray. Living God, we want to thank you for your grace and mercy. We want to thank you for this beautiful morning, O Lord. As we worship together, Lord, help us to feel your presence. As we praise you, as you hear your sermon, Lord, we pray that you will minister to us and you will speak to us, O oh Father. Lord, I pray for every member of Teams to Care who are worshipping their homes, O oh Father, that your anointing will be upon them, O oh Father. Lord, we commit this service into your hand and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come, let us all arise and sing the opening hymn. Now stand up and worship our Lord through songs of praises.
Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this new morning, this new day that we can once again come together as a church, even from our various locations, Lord, to worship you and in one accord to offer this prayer unto you, to give you glory and honor and to bless you, Lord, this Sunday morning. Father, we want to just bring our elderly before you. We want to pray for each one of them, Lord, wherever they may be, um, that you are watching over them, that you will continue to comfort them and be with them, guide them and bless them, Lord. Let them feel a closeness with you, Lord, and even as they rise in the morning, Lord, to have a touch from you that they can say with all their heart, taste and see that the Lord is good and they can testify to people of your goodness in their life. Father, we also want to bring our sick before you at this time, especially uh, Kenneth, who is uh, battling cancer in UK, Lord. We just want to pray for him, pray for his family, Lord, his parents and his brother. And even as he goes through this difficult period, Lord, we just pray for your sustaining grace upon each one of them, especially for Kenneth, and that you would uh, be merciful to him, Lord. 
uh, do not give him so much uh, pain that he cannot bear anymore Lord be merciful to him and uh, let him be able to uh, enjoy a good days ahead Lord Father, we pray for your hand of mercy upon him and we pray, Lord, that you would give him, if it is within your will, Lord, to give him wholeness in body and mind and spirit, Lord, that you would heal him completely. We also want to pray for the others in our church who might be suffering from various ailments, Lord. We commit them into your hands, Lord. Whatever the sickness is, whatever the the difficulty is in their life, Lord, you are the great healer. Father, we just pray that you would heal and give them uh, good days to look forward to. Father, at this time, we want to especially pray and commit our church into your hands. Father, that we have so much of uh, time alone with you, Lord. We pray that we would use this time to come closer to you, to know you better, to be um, uh, closely connected with you, Lord, and that we would hear your heartbeat. Father, we pray that when this church reopens once again, Lord, and that we can come and congregate as we used to before, Father, it will be a, a, a new set of people with renewed hearts and minds that would come, Lord. And that, Father, we will have a wonderful uh, reunion. We will have a wonderful uh, uh, unity, experience wonderful unity in this uh, place, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you would use our church uh, for the extension of your kingdom uh, to be a light in this place, Lord, especially in Brickfields, uh, to make a difference to the community around us. And Father, last but not least, we want to commit our nation, our Agong, our Prime Minister and his cabinet, and uh, all people who are in a uh, high position of power, Lord, especially in the government, we pray, Lord, to commit them into your hands, though, Lord, they may not know you personally as their Lord and Saviour, yet, Lord, you have appointed them and you have placed them in such position. So, Father, we pray that they would do the right thing, Lord, that they would uh, speak up for justice, that they would go against corruption, that they would uh, do things that is for the good of the right yet, Lord, and, uh, uh, be, be, uh, and not uh, to look into personal interests, Lord. We pray, Lord, that the government will uh, be a government that will be God-fearing, Lord Jesus. We commit them into your hands. And we pray, Lord, that you would guide them, Lord, to this months ahead and to the years to come. We commit all this into your hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Shall we continue with the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, we have come to a time where we will give our best gift to God. Come, let us pray for tithes and offering. Our dear Heavenly Father, would like to thank you and praise your holy name, Father. Here, Lord, we bring forth our best gift, Lord, to you, our tithes and our offering. Lord, we pray that you will accept this gift. Lord, you have blessed us so much, Lord. Now we bring our best gift to you. Bless, Lord, every hands that brings you tithes and offering. May these tithes and offering, Lord, be useful to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to give our tithes and offering, let us sing this song.
please stand for the reading of the word. Today's Bible reading is taken from Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciple, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Hello, good morning everyone. I believe all of you are good in condition. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Today friends, I will be preaching from Mark chapter 4 verses 35 until 41. The title of my sermon today, Jesus Calms the Storm. Jesus comes the storm. So let us see what is the context of Mark chapter 4 verses 35 until 41. This text talks about a stilling of one of the violent storms which not infrequently descended with great suddenness on the Galilean lake. Weary at the close day of a day teaching, Jesus was rowed eastward across the lake by his disciples. Upon the boat's cushion which placed at the stern, away from the splashing of the waves, Jesus rested his head and he fell asleep. On the storm rising, the disciples aroused Jesus, suggesting to him that he was deaf to their parry. The coming of the waters, however, caused them to be all struck before him. Introduction. My dear friends, all of us will go through storms at some point in our life, whether we like it or not. Uh, it may be sickness, financial problems and relationship issues, losing jobs or seeing our loved ones wrestling with death. To tell the truth, in those minutes, trusting God is quite a big matter. Furthermore, those storms just appeared suddenly without any warning. For example, COVID-19 appeared suddenly and everything around us went haywire. Friends, not all storms come to disrupt our lives. Some come to clear our path. Sometimes we be like the disciples in the raging storm on the sea with Jesus. We panic and question why God doesn't make them to stop. Maybe let us think for a moment. God is testing us. Maybe he wants us to trust him more and have faith in him that he is in control. Friends, let me tell you this truth. Each storm proves to us that we are not in control of anything. Each storm proves to us that we are not in control of anything. Let's realize this. God wants us to learn a few things from this story. My dear people of God, don't get discouraged or petrified. Friends, the one who stilled the storm on that day is now with us today. Come, let us draw ourselves nearer to him. Today, you will experience his great calm descend upon you. My first point, the Lord's presence is with us. Let us read verses 35 until verse 36. 35 until verse 36. Friends, many of us will imagine storm and life's trials are a result of disobedience. You know, that's a common, um, common thinking. But this is not always the case. Let me give you an illustration to understand, to, to have a better understanding on this. Prophet Jonah ended up in a storm because of his disobedience. Correct? Prophet Jonah ended up in a storm because of his disobedience. But on the other hand, Jesus' disciples caught in a storm because they obeyed his commandments. 
Prophet Jonah ended up in a storm because of his disobedience, while Jesus' disciples caught in a storm because they obeyed his commandments. So God allows us to encounter a storm in life to instruct us this way. I believe we know what happened immediately um, after the disciples got onto into the boat. All of a sudden, a storm raged around them. They were petrified. Possibly, they would have seen death dancing before them. At the at this suspense time, they look for their teacher, Jesus. Just imagine, friend. How do you feel if you caught Jesus sleeping while you are in a big trouble? He was catching some sleep on a comfy cushion at the stern of the boat. However, the disciple cried out to him in fear. Then Jesus responded to their need, calm me. He responded to their need, calm me. Friends, I see the disciples shouldn't have to fear. You want to know why? Look at verse 35. On that day when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, let us go across to the other side. Jesus gave them a command saying, let us cross over to the other side. I repeat, let us cross over to the other side. This offers profound teaching in this passage, isn't it? Before they would have started their journey, he had already promised them indirectly saying, they will reach the destination. That's the magic. That's the miracle. He had already promised them indirectly, we will surely reach the other side. Friends, we must realize that when our Lord says, let us cross over this in every life circumstances, it means we are going to cross over. We are going to cross over. Jesus never promises a comfy life journey, but what he promised was an assured arrival to our destination. Friends, the disciples have made a proper decisions in their time of peril. They look for Jesus. Even though they are scared to death, but in that time they look for Jesus. Likewise, friends, I encourage all of you to believe that the Lord's presence is always with us in this difficult time. He never leaves us nor forsakes us in any position. God wants us to look for him like the disciples did. Psalm 56 verse 3. Psalm 56 verse 3. It says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. But then in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2, it says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I believe all of you know preacher called D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody at once combined the first uh, line of these two verses, thus stated a wonderful quote. It says, it is okay to say, whenever I am afraid, I will trust. It is okay to say, whenever I am afraid, I will trust. But it is more beneficial to say, I will trust and not be afraid. He said that the Lord's presence is always with us, friends. Secondly, the Lord cares for us. You can see this in verses 37 until verse 39. The disciples expressed their displeasure over Jesus, seeing him sleeping on the cushion. This is so like us. This is so like us. Each storm causes us to think that God doesn't care about me anymore. Right? Friends, this is not true. Every storm that comes into our lives is the very instrument of the Lord to build trust in us. Jesus cares for our relationship with Him. Jesus wants us to grow in the relationship with Him. You can see this in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, 
strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Growing together with Jesus in Christianity is matters, friends. This is very important. Secondly, Jesus always cares for our condition. He always cares for our condition. We as a mortal human being, sometimes we cannot perceive how much God cares for us, how much God cares for me. We as parents, we always give the best for our children. We sacrifice many things for the benefits of our children. Similarly, God cares and sacrifice for us is beyond our comprehension. Friends, please don't come into a conclusion that God is not with us in this time of COVID-19 or in your trial time. Truly, He is with us now and always. He is with us now and always. With allowing this to take place, God wants us to grow us up, to make us more like Jesus. Friends, allow me to share a short testimony to encourage us, to encourage you. Since last year, my family is going through a kind of little storm. My father is no longer working because just recently uh, it is, um, he recovered from some wound on his feet. He is a diabetic patient, but thank God nothing serious happened to him. All sorts of bills, rentals, and other commitments need to pay out friends. I have to get my sister married. My wife's office had to retrench her due to less income. Now she is looking for a profession which fits a qualification. Friends, my board is rocking quite hard. But in my board was Jesus. We are, we are managing with His grace and help. We are managing. We are managing. We are managing with His grace and help. I remembered the promise He gave to me when I first entered full-time ministry, he promised to me from Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, God indeed cares for us. He cares for my family. The disciples thought they would die, but the raging storm immediately ceased after Jesus uttered his command. The disciples didn't die or scatter uh, like a speck of dust. They were with their teacher on the board still. Friends, Jesus is more concerned where we will spend our eternity. He wants us to spend eternity with him in heaven. Let us see John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I believe there is no greater care beyond this verse. And thirdly, the Lord Most High is to be feared. You can see this in verse 40 and verse 41. Even though the episode of this storm had shaken the disciple very severely, but they able to discover who Jesus is. God wouldn't do anything without reason, friends. God wouldn't do anything without reason in our life. So, this episode of storm has helped the disciples to increase their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Firstly, they discovered Jesus' supreme power over nature. So, uh, if you see verse 40 and verse 41, they discovered three things. They discovered three things. Firstly, they discovered Jesus' supreme power over nature. Friends, how heavenly it is to know that we are worshipping the one who possesses all power. Not a little power, not a partially power, but the one who possesses all power. Jesus can handle everything in our life. There is nothing is too difficult for him. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17. Our Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult. 
Nothing is too difficult for you. He is so powerful, so he is to be feared. Come, my dear friends, I invite you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ more. Secondly, they discovered Jesus' astonishing peace. After the raging storm ceased, they felt a great calm among them. Friends, we need peace in our life. We need peace. All of us need peace in our life. Because tons of things in life will threaten us. That's for sure. That's for sure. But Jesus will never leave us to face the storm alone. He is great to be feared because he can bring peace in the storm. Only he can do that. Only he can do that. Let me repeat. He is great to be feared because Jesus alone can bring peace in the storm. In the storm. All the raging storm in your life will cease in Jesus' name. If you believe, you will receive it. My dear friends, I invite you to come. Jesus wants to give you his peace. Draw yourself to him now. Thirdly, they discovered who Jesus is. After the storm ceased, they asked among themselves a question. Okay, you can see the question I mean, verse 41. Who then is this? They asked this question among themselves. Who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. So now friends, I would like to ask this question to you. Who is Jesus to you? How well do you know him? The disciples guessed they knew him until he commanded the wind and the sea. The disciples thought they knew Jesus. Oh, Jesus is the son of Joseph and Mary. They thought they knew him until he commanded the wind and the sea. Here Jesus revealed himself as the son of God in their midst. So who is Jesus? Is? Friends, this is the most important question you will ever answer. I would encourage you to look for him in every situation like the disciples did. Keep looking for him. Keep trusting him. Then you will marvel looking at his works in your life. The Lord Jesus is great and powerful. He is Emmanuel. He is the pioneer and perfecter of faith. So he is to be feared. My dear friends, once again I would like to invite all of you to come to the Prince of Peace. He will give you his peace. As a conclusion, friends, that's why I believe all of us can relate to this wonderful and powerful passage. Once again, I would like to emphasize this. Jesus never promised an easy trip in life. Jesus never promised an easy trip in life. But he promised a secure arrival to the other side. What did he promise was? He promised a secure arrival on the other side. I believe after this, all of us will learn to trust Jesus in our trials and mature in our faith as well. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Call to him if you find yourself in a storm. Call to him if you find yourself in a storm. He is faithful and he will help you. What is our action plan? So what I did was I dismantled uh, Mark chapter 4 verses 39 until 41 um, into 8 bullet points. So these, uh, these 8 bullet points are our action plans. You can see now this in our slides. First of all, be at peace. Be at peace. Secondly, be still. Third, your raging storm will cease. Fourth, a great calm will descend upon you. Fifth, don't be afraid of anything that comes. Then, increase your faith more in Him. Then you will fill with the fear of God. And lastly, then you will marvel looking at His works in your life. Friends, as usual, I would like to end my sermon with a punchline. I hope this punchline will help you. 
the punchline was with Christ in the vessel I smile at the storm with Christ in the vessel I smile at the storm come let us pray father we are but fallen humanity here saved by the blood of Jesus Christ covered in his righteousness knowing oh God that we are sinners knowing that we are going to make us like your son Jesus Christ Lord we pray that whatever it takes open our open up our hearts open our minds make your word make this word part of us Lord help us to walk in your path of righteousness and may we guide those who walk them behind us oh God help us to be like Jesus help us to be like Jesus our Savior in Jesus name we pray Amen God bless you Praise the Lord. We have a couple of announcements. Today at 11 a.m. we have a MYF Zoom meeting. Please join this youth meeting. I encourage all youths to participate in this youth meeting at 11 a.m. For more information, please contact our MYF president, Mr. Jared Justin. Second announcement. 
We're going to start our Bible study on Wednesday. The Tamil Bible study will be at 7 p.m. to 7.50 p.m. And the English Bible study will be at 8 to 9 p.m. I'll repeat again. Our Bible study will take place on every Wednesday. Tamil Bible study is from 7 p.m. to 7.50 p.m. And the English Bible study from 8 to 9 p.m. We will focus on minor prophet this time. Please join this Bible study. We will send other details later. The third announcement, we have a church prayer on every Thursday via Zoom. Please join this prayer that will be at 8 p.m. on every Thursday. Please join and we will also send other details later. The last announcement, pastoral visitation will be on every Friday. We will visit the needy and the senior members of the church. Continue to pray for this visitation. Also pray for all of our church members, those who are sick, for senior members and those who are in need. May the Lord bless you and you will see great blessing from God if you commit yourself to God. Shalom. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe God has spoken to us this morning. I want to thank Pastor Nelson for the good sermon. Friends, we are going through a difficult time these days. There are different kinds of storms in our life. But remember God is with us. It's Almighty God, the faithful God, who will never forsake us. Come, let us pray and also receive the benediction. Almighty God, I want to thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for your word this morning, O Lord. There are different kinds of storms in our life, but we know that you will make your way in every situation, O Lord. Your Almighty God and faithful God who deliver us, will save us from every kind of storms in our life, O oh Lord. Lord, this morning we commit ourselves into your hand, our family, our church, our nation. Even though this pandemic of Father difficult for us, but you are faithful God who will heal this nation, the world. And Father, we commit our TMC care church members into your hand. As they are worshipping you in their homes, O oh Father, as they are observing this home service in their homes, Lord, we pray that your mighty hand will be upon them, O oh Lord Jesus. Let them see your great blessings in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord.